Hi, I'm Rachel Katz. It's a stressful time, including for those in the performing arts, as the COVID-19 coronavirus has forced the cancellation or postponement of many concerts, and in some cases, the entire rest of the season. But on a positive note, I've been finding many inspiring examples of how musicians are coming together to share their music. I've been reaching out to these musicians and ensembles about these projects, so stay with me for the next five minutes as we hear more about them on a positive note. When Kaufman Music Center in New York City was making its closure decisions, there were a number of layers to consider. Not only is it the home of Merkin Concert Hall, it also encompasses the Lucy Moses School, a community music school offering music and dance instruction, as well as a public school for musically gifted students. This diverse range of programs and a varied set of audiences provided a rich archive of material to choose from when they decided to launch online encores, daily video posts to its social media sites of selections from its concert programs geared towards all ages. Kate Sheeran is executive director. We have a community music school. We have over 2,000 students there. We have a New York City public school that we run in conjunction with the Department of Education. We have about over 300 students there. And then we have our uh, Merkin Hall, which is our concert presenter. We also have Face the Music, which is a, a youth program that runs on Sundays for, for students to play all new music. So with each of those areas, we were making decisions about what would be possible. And in some of those areas, they weren't our decisions to make. So for instance, with special music school, it was up to the Department of Education. So while we were starting to move our community music school online, we were waiting to see what the city would say in terms of public schools. And so the plans were evolving and changing at an extremely rapid pace as they have been for everybody in every field. And certainly it became very clear even before we uh, all of the school programming that was moved online that Merkin Hall could not operate because of the gathering of audiences. So all of those decisions were were happening um, minute by minute. And I guess it, it still seems strange that that was not quite two weeks ago. Since then, you have launched your online encores. What type of decisions went into creating that? We've been releasing concerts that are recent full-length concerts or from from either this season or recent seasons of our performances in Merkin Hall, both our presentations and of our educational programs. And part of that was wanting to give people things to do. And we've also heard uh, in terms of taking in music and experiencing um, concerts that maybe they were favorites that they attended or things that they didn't get to see yet. Part of the reason that for that too was that everyone's in a different situation, but part of the feedback we've been getting is that people are interested in seeing things at regular intervals and scheduled things, especially families. So we have a mix of content that uh, you can view at any time, but we're releasing it either when evening concerts would have happened at those times or during the day so that students and families at home can look at content together. So an example would be Rob Capolo, uh, when he does What Makes It Great, it's Mondays at 7. So the first one we did was this past Monday, and it was at 7 o'clock when people would be normally attending a concert in Merkin Hall. And then we have daytime programming like Broadway Playhouse, which are versions of musicals for kids. Those happen on Sunday mornings. We're still going to release those on Sunday mornings so that families who are home together can watch them. And I can imagine that the family part is a a major aspect of this. How are you choosing the content, particularly for for children? For children, the daytime programming, we have a mix of student performances and of the programming that we have in Merkin Hall that is intended for families. And the daytime programming that are our students performing, we always find in any circumstance that kids inspire kids. If you can see other students performing, you can think, oh, what can I achieve? Because you see people in your, uh, your uh, young people in your age group doing it. So the student performances are both to inspire families about the possibilities of music education, but also to kind of uh, walk down recent memory lane of some of our favorite student performances. Those are the student performances. And then for um, 
the family programming, as I mentioned, Broadway Playhouse is one of them, which are great. I love going to Broadway Playhouse. The audiences sing along, and certainly we hope people are singing along from their living rooms when they watch them. And we also have some of Orly Shaham's backyard, uh, sorry, Bachyard, her, Orly Shaham's Bachyard, where she's doing programming for children on introducing them to instruments and composers. And we have some archived content from Orly as well that will have some new messages from her from her living room. What have you heard from either some of the artists that you're featuring and also Mm -hmm. the audience? We've certainly gotten good feedback from audiences of saying thank you for posting things or oh, it was so nice to see this again. And our audiences are a combination of people who are distinct to Merkin Hall, but also overlap with our education programs. And throughout our education programs, you know, we have over 2,000 students who are doing some type of online learning through heroic efforts of faculty and staff. And we've gotten great feedback that people love to still be con- connected through the arts. Even if it feels a little different, they have the comfort of community that the arts provide, as well as hearing their teacher's voice or giving different activities. So there's that overlap as well. Um, From the artists, you know, this was the first year at Kaufman that we had artists in residence who were working in our education programs, as well as having presentations in Market Hall. And we're continuing conversations with those artists. That's Rob Capolo, Natalie Joachim, and the Jack Quartet. And we are still working on projects, either that are new projects given the circumstance, or that are pivots from projects that were in person. And they're continuing to work with our students and our audiences, and we'll be releasing that content as it becomes available as well. We really think of Kevin Music Center as a community center, and we use the arts as our tool to connect community. And it's been, it's heartening. Of course, it's among the most difficult circumstances any of us could imagine, but it's also heartening that the connections that are there still remain, and the, the strength of the connections through the arts still remain. So we just have to be a little more creative, but um, we're finding that that's true now more than ever. You can find Kaufman Music Center's online encores on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as at its website, kaufmanmusiccenter.org. You can also hear my full conversation with her on our website at wwfm.org. That's our positive note for today. Till next time, I'm Rachel Katz.